I find the truth. There is one, the all in all. The truth that makes me free to be. I heed its every call. I turn within, dear Lord, for there you dwell. In my heart of hearts, where all is well. The love, the peace and joy that is spirit expressed. I find tis me, dear God, and make manifest. I turn within, dear Lord, for there you dwell. In my heart of hearts, where all is well. The love, the peace and joy that is spirit expressed. I find tis me, dear God, and make manifest. I turn within, dear Lord, for there you dwell. In my heart of hearts, where all is well. The love, the peace and joy that is spirit expressed. I find tis me. Wonderful evening to each and every one of you. It's so awesome to have you joining here with us at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living at this our inaugural Lifeline, the very first in our series. It's going to be a wonderful evening. So I'm just inviting you to sit back, relax. We have an awesome afternoon uh, scheduled for you. One hour of connectivity, liberty, love, and laughter. <laughs> We're going to look at how to thrive and remain spiritually centered during these absolutely extraordinary times. And we are going to have a really great time together. And we look forward to having you here and to have you asking your questions and sharing with us. Okay, so now I'm going to invite our pastor, Reverend John Scott, to start us off with an opening affirmative prayer and to share with us just a few words from the Temple of Light family. Thank ah, you. thank you, Sandy, and good evening, one and all. Welcome to this hour of connectivity, liberty, love, and laughter. And you know, speaking of laughter, this time of being home with self, I'm reminded of the little boy named Johnny who opened the big old family Bible with fascination 
just looking at all the old pages and the ornate illuminated lettering as he turned page after page. And then something fell out of the Bible. It was a leaf that had been pressed many, many years before. He picked it up and looked at it closely. And then he said, Mama, Mama, look what I found. His mother said from the kitchen in that tone of voice mothers use when they don't want to be bothered, what is it, dear? And with astonishment in his voice, he said, it's Adam's suit. <laughs> I'm sure the mother, as mothers all are at this time, were trying to cope with their kids being at home. I'm sure little Johnny's mother turned to prayer, and so must we. Please join me in this opening <laughs> prayer. Definitely. <laughs> Just know with me right now that right where we are, the spirit of love, the spirit of liberty, the spirit of connectivity, the spirit of laughter and of deep inner joy at home with self, at home with every other self. That love that is the creator of all things now joins us together with cords of everlasting unity so that we are one, one with each other, one with every consciousness that is tuned into this, this hour that we share together, this lifeline of goodness that comes straight from the, the source, the substance of all good, God, the good omnipotent, omniscient and omnipresent force in our lives and in our affairs. And so we simply allow that infinite mind to fill our consciousness wherever we are with every idea we need to touch the, the hem of the garment of spirit and to live from the center, from the inside out, as we turn within, dear Lord, for there you dwell. In our heart of hearts, where all is always well, the love, the peace, and the joy that is spirit express, we find it's you, dear God, and it's made manifest. And I want to just say, thank you, God, Thank you, God. Thank you, God, that this is so. And together we say, and so it is. Oh, so it is. So welcome Thank again to everyone and a very special welcome to one of my favorite prayers, Reverend Eugene Holden. Reverend Eugene led our master class in, in prayer in 2019. And it was truly wonderful. So welcome home, Reverend Eugene. And welcome Glad to everybody home. from the Temple of Light family here in beautiful Jamaica on behalf of our board of trustees, our ministers, our practitioners, and all who worship, work, study, and serve God at the Temple of Life Center for Spiritual Living. Welcome. Namaste. Thank Namaste. you so much, Reverend John. And it is my pleasure to really do the, the big up introduction of our special guest this evening. He has been a student of the science of mind and spirit for over 30 years. He served with the World Ministry of Prayer at Centers for Spiritual Living, and that was their home office for over 10 years, and the last six of which as that department's manager. He was also home office liaison to the Diversity Commission, providing training and facilitation services to that entity. He has contributed to the Science of Mind magazine for over 12 years, writing the monthly affirmations, as well as the daily guides from time to time, touching thousands of lives all around the world. This wonderful soul allows vision to guide him mm. and prayer to fuel him. He's deeply committed to his purpose, to joyfully assist others to remember who and what they truly are divine beings of light. He believes that together we can experience our ever expanding good and reveal the kingdom of heaven right now, right here on earth. Yeah. Friends, please open your hearts mm. and help me welcome our very special guest this evening, Reverend Eugene Hold. <laughs> Sandy, thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Reverend well. John Scott, thank you so very much. Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, thank you so much. Uh, it is once again good to be home. It is good to be home. 
here with Temple of Light and all of my brothers and sisters in Jamaica and everywhere else around the world. You know, it's, I, I love the, the, the theme of today's first episode <clears throat> and this Lifeline episode. And this episode is called Home With Self. And when Cindy um, reached out to me about this and, and was asking me <clears throat> about the title Home With Self, I mean, it is, it is perfect, especially for these times that we find ourselves in uh, uh, around the world, right? Where we are playing safe and not even, but, but being safe, not playing, being safe and, and isolating and being home with self. Now, I've always been, or for a very long time, been a true believer of, of these different aspects of self, right? So when I, what I mean by that is when I hear myself say, I'm going to the store. Now, am I, is it my, is it my little smaller self that is speaking or is it my bigger self that's speaking? See, so what I want to talk about for a short while here is, is that self, right? And so what I will really want to bring home today and, and the people who, who have known, known me and, and seen me and speak or have, any of, have had any of my classes in prayer, you know that my whole thing is there's no separation, right? The first two steps, God, spirit, universal intelligence, call it whatever works for you is all there is. And then step two is I am one with that which I recognize. In the Upanishad, in the Hindu um, tradition, the Upanishads speak a lot about the self, and that's what the capital S, self. Self is um, Brahma, self is God, self is that which is the creator of all things. And there's a beautiful Upanishad, I believe it's in Makatha Upanishad, that speaks about the self is that which puts the taste into water. That is who you are. Right. So when we think about being home with self in this time of isolation, in this time of what they refer to as social distancing, and I'll speak more to that, in this time of, of we, where we are home with self, it's a beautiful time to really be home with self. And so what does that mean? That means not being guided or directed by that little small self, but being home with that self that knows that in the spite of the appearances, in spite of what all that is going on, to stand firm, home with that self that knows, that knows, that absolutely knows that no matter what, life will continue to thrive because this is the mandate of life. I was singing a song today and this just came, this just came to me. Um, a Stevie Wonder song as, as around the sun, the earth, no she's revolving. And there's a verse in there that says um, that life has given love a guarantee to last through forever and a day, right? That life has given love a guarantee and that is to last, you know, forever and a day. So with this thing called life, which is also home, and with this thing called love, which is also home, when we find ourselves home with self, when we really get into our spiritual practice of meditation and spiritual mind treatment and in an affirmative prayer and affirmations where we are consciously wanting to connect with self, we come to that still sacred place of the most high, wherein we, we put on the masks to go out we, we maintain the, the, the six foot distance that, that we are to maintain. And as we are doing that, we are doing that from a consciousness of love. We are doing it from a consciousness of peace. And we are doing it from a consciousness of really knowing within ourselves that in spite of the appearances that life truly is, is good. So what does it look like? What does it feel like in these days to be home with self? Well, I'm glad you asked the question. One of the things I want to talk about is being home, being home. You know, there's a saying that home is where the heart is, which for me means that no matter where I go, 
when I am there within my heart, that's what I call home. Now, obviously, our homes are those places where, where we get to, you know, relax and we let our hair down and, and, and all of that. But when we are walking and living and moving and having our being in, in, the, in the home of self, in spite of what the news says during these times, we get to stand firm, mm -hmm. knowing that number one, that we are doing our part, playing our role, not, not doing a spiritual bypass saying that none of this is real, that it's a media hoax and all of that. No, there, there are things really going on. And so as we, as, we, as, we, as we come home to self, as we live from that space, we get to, to open up and be compassionate, not only for, the, for those who are going through this situation in maybe less than, than favorable ways, but we also get to be home in that place of love with ourselves. Meaning that Sometimes, I don't know about you, but sometimes I may get a little distracted by the news mm -hmm. or sometimes I might get distracted by conversations that I may hear or may be a part of, you know, even. And wanting not to be distracted because I realize that once I get distracted, then I start that spiraling down this rabbit hole of, oh no, you know, what's going to happen until, and, and, and until I, I can wake up, you know, and come home to self. Going, you know what? There is only one power. There is only one presence. There is only one life. And again, call it whatever works for you. And as I connect with that, oh yeah, there is this, this, this infinite intelligence that knows exactly what it's doing, even now, even now. And when I, when we can, can really sit in that knowing, don't know, have to, don't know have to know how, but knowing that there is something within and something surrounding us that is at the source and that is at the very center of all of life. And as we choose to, to think up on, mm, mm, thank you, spirit. As we choose to think from a higher vibration, as we choose to live from a higher vibration, as we choose to live from this highest vibration of home, which is that spiritual place within us, then we get to be the examples of not just perfect health, but we get to be the example of courage. We get to be the example of, of joy. We get to be the example of love. And again, I'll go back to that word. We get to be the example of compassion. Mm -hmm. There are things going on. There's no doubt about that. There are things going on. And I've said for a number of years now that we who are on this spiritual path have been born at such a time as this mm -hmm. to stand up or to sit, sometimes we may need to sit, but to stand boldly in knowing that even in the midst of this, I shall not be moved. Why? Because I am home with self. Now, here's an interesting thing um, in another announcement that I got about this, that the name was slightly changed. I don't know if Sandy caught, 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 caught that, but it was coping with self, right? And, mm -hmm. and when I caught that, I'm like, wow, I don't, we don't, we don't want to cope with self. We want to be home with, with self. Coping is okay, but that's almost like a compromise or like, okay, I, I can cope with this. But when we are home with, with self, man, then we have the power within us to decide that what it is that we want to experience and how we want to experience this, which we're going, going through. Mm -hmm. So home with self. Is about connecting with that deepest part of you, even that part of you that may feel fearful. Even when that fear comes up, there's a deeper part. There's a deeper part that we get to come home to and allow that fear to be mm, transformed into faith to be transformed into, okay, what is mine to do? To be transformed into the thought, okay, who am I to be in all of this? See, because I know for me that once I am clear in who am I to be, that helps to inform what's mine to do. 
So when you find yourself, when we find ourselves being flustered, that's a beautiful sign. That's a beautiful signal to take a breath. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, let me remember that home is where the heart is. That going within is where I live from, right? So as we go within, we can know that we will never go without. As we continue to stand in, 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 that, in that vibration of love, in the I amness of who we are, rest assured that, that, that life unfolds in magnificent ways in spite of the appearances, in spite of the appearances. Home with self is being home with the I am. And the I am is who we truly are. The I am that causes all to be, as scripture says, the I am that was before Ibrahim is the I am that, that breathes our breath, it beats our heart, it animates our body temple. So why not be home with the I am? Why not be home with self? Yeah. I'm, I'm, Sandy, I'm, I'm going to stop there for right now. Well, you said so much, I don't know where to begin. I mean, <laughs> certainly one of the things that um, we grapple with as, as students of truth at whatever level is um, dealing with, as you call them, the distractions, because we have what we dubbed the truth student syndrome. Hmm. All is well, you know, and so on. But there's a lot of stuff going on out there and it's real. It's, it's real in the context of, of, of what's going on. Right. So I'm really glad that you, 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 you know, you highlighted that and, and, and made it clear that, it, that we don't allow ourselves to get, as you say, sucked down the rabbit hole of the mm -hmm. external. And as we go within to where home is, we, we can never go without, without. We, can't, we, we will maintain our health, we will maintain our prosperity and we will remain, uh, maintain all that is good. Um, I'd like to make a comment, Sandy, as well. Sorry, Reverend John? I'd like to make a comment when you're through. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I just, I just was struck by Reverend Eugene when he said, sometimes we get distracted by the news. Mm -hmm. And I was remembering a story I read by an unknown author called The Stranger. And the author said, um, when I was a, a, a young, a little boy, a stranger came to live with us in our home and he lived in a Christian, in a Christian home. His parents were, were devout Christians. He said, but his father was fascinated by the stranger who had stories of faraway places and wonderful, a wonderful lifestyle. And the stranger, in spite of his parents being devout Christians, introduced them to the, 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 the joys of alcohol and, and the glamour of cigarette smoking. And although his parents never even said darn or damn, um, the stranger used profanities quite quite freely in the home and he was never challenged. Sometimes his mother would just get up and go quietly to her bedroom, he thought to pray, but nobody ever asked the stranger to leave. And so somebody said, what, what, who was this stranger? And he said, we called him TV. <laughs> yeah. And TV since then got married to a computer and they have a child called a cell phone. And those, that little family of strangers that are very familiar to us and are part of our everyday lives mm -hmm. really can take us from center, from self, from the big self and put us right back where we, we began mm -hmm. with the fears of the little self and the, and the, the judgments and, the, and the, um, the limitations and the sense of separation. So I'm so grateful that Reverend, Reverend Eugene has brought us back to our focus on home being where the heart is. So when you're at home, you're where your heart is and the heart is the temple of the living God, the altar of light. And I'm so happy yes. that you mentioned that Reverend Eugene. Thank and you. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if, if you are in your, in the place where you get your mail or you're somewhere else, wherever you are is home. Awesome. Right. Now it would be good to see um, what our listeners are, are saying. Um, uh, Steve, have you seen any, um, what questions do we have from the chat? Where is Steve? And as we are wait, waiting yeah. on that, just real fast, mm -hmm. 
uh, you know, you know, uh, home. I, I, as you know, as you folks know, down in Jamaica, I love, I love to sing, love to sing, singing everywhere I go. And for me, that's, and I, I'm comfortable in doing that because I'm really home wherever I go. So one of the markets that I go to lo locally, they don't know my name, but they know me by, oh, that's the guy who's always singing. Yeah. And what yeah, happens yeah. with that when we share that that joy, because that's what singing is about for me, is sharing joy and sharing that love. And I don't sing for anybody except for me because it feels it feels good. But it You're also a bathroom baritone, right, Eugene. I'm sorry? You're a bathroom baritone. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and, and what I love about it making me feel good, it also spreads to everyone else that is in earshot, right? So share, share from your heart because heart, home is where the heart is. And when you share from your heart, you are sharing a part of your home. Absolutely. I, I wanted to make a comment too about this word liberty that we use in Jamaica. I don't know if our listeners all across the world know the origins of that word. Um, but liberty comes from the Rastafarian culture um, in Jamaica, and it is, a, it is the Rastafarian concept of righteousness, which we in truth sometimes call right useness right. of the law. So this concept of righteous, ever-living living, living um, has its essence in the realization that there is an energy uh, or a life force, if you like, within that flows through all life all people, all sentient beings, and in fact, all things. So liberty is a way of life. And mm -hmm. I think it's such a wonderful concept and a wonderful word. You know, is your liberty one of living in close contact with the indwelling God? Or is that just a Sunday morning or a Saturday whenever you worship event that then, you know, you go and you feel good and then you, get, you, go, you go about um, your business as usual when it's over? Or are we living in a, in, a, in a sense of being centered where the heart is, where the home is, with the self? Um, and you, you spoke about the vibration to Reverend Eugene. And, and I think we have a responsibility to, um, the, to, to work on the vibration. And can you just give us some ideas as to how we can raise our vibration in spite of hearing the news, getting the WhatsApp messages and all of these things that are happening around us? Sandy, that's a great question and thank you for um, asking it. And there are a couple of really easy ways to raise our vibration. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when we hear that phrase, you know, you need to raise your vibration, the mind may think about, okay, so what do I need to do? Do I need to, to go to a cave? Do I need to get really still? And one of the best ways to do it, the simplest ways to do it, is check your posture. Mm. Check oh, your posture. You. <laughs> so <laughs> and it's an amazing thing. Because when we watch people and they're slumped over, their vibration is also low, right? So to change that, take the crown point, And there's a reason why it's called the crown, because we're royalty. So let's raise the crown up. And as we raise the crown point, not lifting up the chin, but raising up the crown, that straightens up the spinal cord, which now gives the freedom of the organs. It gives freedom to the organs. So now there's not as much weight compacting them. So they don't have to work as hard, but it changes the vibration of our mentality. Oh. So the first thing I want to offer is change your posture. When your posture changes, your breathing changes. Okay. When your breathing changes, that raises the vibration. Okay. Wow. It's very interesting that you say that because um, when I used to dance, my dance teacher would say, just pretend as if there's a little man holding you, uh, um, like by a string. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and when you, uh, they would say, pull up. And and then when we raise and stretch every vertebra from, from the top of our, um, the base of our skull, yes. right down to our tailbone. Yes. Uh, and it would give us a sense of being lighter and yes. we moved better and looked better. Right. Okay, I see um, there is something coming in the chat through Steve. Go ahead, Steve.
question or comment? Yeah, uh, please. Um, yeah, go ahead. Hmm. Perhaps you could just put it in the chat and then I would just um, take it off. So I'm not hearing you. So as Steve is writing that in the chat, I, I want to speak to that as well, um, because that's also the concept in, um, in uh, Tai Chi Chuan, mm -hmm. is that we stand as if we are suspended by the top of the head through this celestial cord, almost like, and they will say that it's like um, a, a marionette, a, a puppet, mm -hmm. right? But when you, but so here's the other thing about this, right? So we're being pulled from above, but the gravity of the earth is pulling down on the centers of the feet. So we have this, we have this yin and this yang, and it all works as one. Yes, beautiful. We are created in such magnificent ways. The body temple is amazing. Yeah. And, and there are no mistakes. There are no mistakes. Yeah. yeah. Still nothing coming in from Steve. I, I know he's unmuted. All right. I will ask a question. Zadrian um, asks, how can we support others who are having a challenging time during COVID and don't want to hear all is well? Mm. Mm -hmm. Very good question. Reverend Eugene. I, I didn't quite catch the very last part of that. I, I, it was how can we support others um, who are who are going through a challenging time and they don't want to hear all is well. Right. Because oh, yeah. all is not well to them. <laughs> yeah, right. And 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 that's okay. Because in for me, in that moment, because they don't want to hear all all is well. Because all is not well in their experience. So how can I, I'm, I'm using I, but I do mean we, but how, how can I support that person? Number one is let me show up in the best way that I can, right? That's why I was saying, who am I to be in this particular experience? Wanting to support someone who doesn't want to hear all is, is well, great. How can I, who am I to be in, in this? And then what is mine to do? How do I show up for this person? Because I want to meet everybody where they are, right? Mm -hmm. So how do I support them with, with, ooh, mm, mm, with this presence, this vibration that Sandy was speaking about, with this vibration of love? And a really easy way to do that is to ask, how can I support you? How can I serve you best? Okay. So in that moment, we're just being there for them. Yes. And even if it could be just to listen to them. Yes. But they may not, they may just need to outpour. Yeah. Vent. I believe that communication is very important. And I also believe that there are two sides to communication, the listening and the speaking. And for me, the most important side is the listening. Absolutely. Do I not only am I listening, but do I hear that person? So yes, Sandy, it is how it is about being being pre the present. And sometimes being present can look like not saying a word, mm -hmm. just being there. Okay. Great question. Yes. Um, I have another comment there. You know, you know, it, it, that works so well. Just being there for people who are in grief as well. If people who are in grief don't want to hear a whole string of platitudes, and you know, the person has gone on to a a, great, a, a greater place and a, a better place and all of that, they don't want to hear that they're in grief. And I had the privilege of doing a Thanksgiving service two weeks ago for an old member of the. Temple of Light, Center for Spiritual Living. And of course, with the, the current situation, the protocols, um, 10 people are allowed um, in, in the sanctuary. So I, I am one, so that left nine uh, you know, people. But we had an organist, so that, was, that left eight. 
and you could tell that they were feeling the weight of and the sorrow of you know the, the the whole family and all the friends and what we're used to in Jamaica, a huge gathering supporting wasn't there. So I said, you know, each of you has to stand for 20 people who would love to be here and whose hearts are here this morning. So please stand up and say, I stand for the 20 people who would love to be here this morning. Mm. And they stood up and I said, stand fully erect and imagine there's a thread pulling you through the top of your head and just know that you are representing a lot of people who who are the, whose hearts are with you and are with us on this special day and you could tell the change in energy people felt better because they knew that they they were performing an important role for people who couldn't be there awesome thank you reverend john um vance um chesebu is us right that's what i was about to share mm -hmm. especially with those who live alone how to be one with self and not worry about family abroad, et cetera. Thanks, fans. Reverend Eugene, did you get that? Yes, I did. Whew, and that's a very real question, right? You know, how do I not worry? Because that's, that's the key word. How do I not worry about a family member that's away you know, and going, going through this. And that takes practice. You know, that, that takes, and, I'm, and there's no way that I'm going to sit here and say that that is an easy thing to uh, do, right? Is, you know, it, it's, it's difficult sometimes. It's a challenge. Let me put it that way. It's a challenge not to worry about a loved one. But the practice of coming home to self. Mm -hmm and knowing within self that, that, that all is well with, with self. Now we're gonna get a little metaphysical here. Um, we're gonna get a little, um, and use some physics in this as well. As I am home with self and I am imagining that loved one in front of me or with me, I'm going to know that what is, what is what is good for me is also happening for my loved one across the planet. Now, as woo woo as that might sound, physics tells us that there is a connection, right? So science tells us that there is, that we are connected, especially when we have that vibration of love. Oh my God, how many times have any of us thought about a loved one and then that person picks up the phone and calls us or we give a person the call and they go, you know, I was just, think, just thinking about you. It's that same principle, it's that same scientific principle that says my family member who is in on the West Coast, no, let me go even further, my, my son who is in Hawaii, Mm. who might be going through something, praise God, he is not, but he is also one of those individuals <laughs> who knows how to, to become still and take it, you know, home. Mm -hmm. And as we continue to, to think those, those loving thoughts, to think those, those okay thoughts, sometimes we can't get to the loving thoughts, okay? So let's get to the okay thoughts, mm. right? We don't need to go from here to here. We, we can go through, we can go from, let me stop worrying to trusting that everything's okay. So I'm not gonna, I'm gonna go from worry to let me just be willing to trust. Mm -hmm. I don't need to go here. Just let me come, let me be willing to trust that all is well. Great question. Awesome, thank I, you. I, I must share with you that on Tuesday, I, I did a class on Zoom with the um, people at the, the men at the adult correctional facility here in mm -hmm. Kingston, the prison. And I just said, what has been on your mind and in your heart since, <laughs> since the, the lockdown? Well, they're used to lockdowns, you know, but of course what's in their heart is their lockdown means they can't get on to a phone to their families um, outside, um, whether they be on the West Coast or right next door to them in Kingston. And there's this sense of that, that question, uh, you know, for those men and, to a man, they were saying, you know, the hardest thing about this is not being able to, to just say to my loved ones, 
you okay? You know, I'm okay too. I'm thinking about you. And I made the same point you made, Reverend Eugene. I said, well, lie in your, on your bunk in your cell and send the love from your heart center to them. They will feel it and it will lift them. Um, the energy, the energy knows no distance. I want us to stop talking about social separation too. We, we don't, we don't know anything about social separation in the Caribbean. It's physical separation. Right. We're socially very, very close. Mm -hmm. Right. I'd like you to comment on that. Yes. It was, you know, it, it was, it was, Reverend John, thank, thank you for bringing that back. I mean, bringing that up because it was a few weeks ago when I was, uh, I don't know where it was, but it was like social distancing no we are distancing physically absolutely socially i mean look we're doing this you know social media zoom has been you know i wish i had 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 some stock in zoom at this time you know because <laughs> <laughs> right? it's being used so much because yes there's a physical distancing going on great fantastic but this is also i love humanity because we as as a as a race of people, black, blue, red, orange, green, when no matter the color, we as a race of people have this innate urge to come together when there's something going on, when there's a so-called disaster, when there's a so-called epidemic, right? So there isn't, Reverend John, thank you, there isn't so much social distancing. I think socially we have become closer. Absolutely. Yeah. That, that is very, very key. Um, and in, as you say this, I would like to say a special shout out to uh, practitioner Jackie Barras from the Big Apple. Jackie's joining us on Facebook. Good evening, Jackie. Hi, Jackie. Yes, yeah, so we say a special welcome to Jackie. Um, was there a question from Jackie or so, Steve? Or a comment? No, she didn't have any particular question. She was just letting you know that um, she's on with you know her employer and they are both having a good time awesome great oh wonderful Fantastic. bless you bless you i have a question reverend eugene that I, i'd like for, um, for you to address you said that and this is part of um the song that we played at the beginning of the of this exercise by written by our own steve it says um i go within their lord for there you dwell in your heart of hearts, where all is well. And then you said, as we go within, we cannot go without. And that <laughs> is, in my mind, very key because one of the challenges of this time, you know, with people having to, to be home, you know, sequestered at home, is that um, salaries have been cut, jobs have been cut, um, contracts have been postponed. That has been my experience. And so it, it really has required some um, inner work in order to um, circumvent that, that experience. Just, can you speak a little bit about the, um, the, the importance of addressing, of going within to address the appearance of, of going without? Yes. Thank you, Sandy. Um, great question. Because the appearance can be that we are going without. You know, it's an amazing thing. When, when all of this began, um, I, I, had, um, I had workshops and speaking, you know, and, and classes that I was going to, to travel to. And that came to a sudden halt. A sudden halt. And I have to admit that I got sucked into the oh no what am i going going to do right and i have to also admit that that took me you know a while i mean that it, i was knocked off of my center my meditation practice stopped my journaling stopped you know my prayer work believe it or not didn't stop but it slowed way way down because it appeared to me that Oh no, I'm having, having to go without. Had to make some changes because of my finance and the Nances, all of that stuff, you know, change, change, changing. Until I got to the point where I'm like, okay, now let me, let me come back to what I know what works for me. Let me come back home. Let me get centered 
and start listening to those. I was let me listening to those those I those ideas that number one will will take me out of the the vibration of fear, which is a lower vibe vibration, and bring me back up into my vibration of creativity. How can I create a way that I can touch life? Because that's that's why I am here. My purpose is here. My purpose is to touch lives. Mm -hmm. So if I don't go out and touch lives, right, then I it appears that I am going without because I'm not being paid, so forth and so on. But I don't do this to get paid. I do this because this is my mission. Mm -hmm. So as I began, mm, thank you, thank you, spirit. As I began to go back with, to come back within, go back within and become clear on what's next, mm -hmm. it was my vision that helped to bring things my way where I am no longer, where it no longer appears that I'm going without. You know, speaking engagements are coming, classes um, are, are coming, or I'll, so more opportunities are showing up. How do we do 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 that? Becoming going back home because that's the theme of tonight's lifeline. You know, being home with self, and then being and then then stepping into and, and living from this place of trust, trusting, trusting, trusting that all is well, that trusting that everything, and I'm gonna use this phrase, although we don't like to use it like this, that everything is going to be okay. Now I know that I put that out into, into the few, future, but there are some of us, that's where we need to start, right? And then we get to that, everything's going to be okay, but then we also get to trust that, you know what? I'm okay now, I'm okay now. Mm -hmm. And you know, nature is 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 um giving us that lesson. Um, there was an article in our Sunday newspaper this week, or I, 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 um I've lost track of the newspapers, but I know one of the Sunday papers, where they were saying that Kingston Harbor, which is the seventh natural one of this, is the seventh largest natural harbor in the world. Wow! And it's been known to be very messy because there are a lot of what we call gullies that um, enter into the harbor. Dump and into the harbor. Yeah, people people um, may um, throw their garbage into the gullies and when the rains fall, it will wash the garbage down into the gullies. But the fishermen are reporting, um, the fishes are coming back, the, um, the, the water is looking clear and the scientists aren't sure whether it's because there is no rain to wash, wash the garbage or if, if, if there is more to just not having people around. So nature is in itself um, just showing us that everything is, is going to be okay. You know, what bigger lesson do we need? You know, Absolutely. Yeah, and you, and, and, and you know what else it shows us is that Truly, we are all connected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nature, okay. you, you humans. Yeah. Yes, awesome. Uh, we have a few minutes left, um, but I see where um, our beloved Lilith is on from Montreal. Oh, Auntie hi, Lilith. Hi, Auntie Lil. And um, just to bear out, Sandy, yes. just to bear out the point that Reverend Eugene is, is saying now, um, somebody actually welcomed him, I think it was um, Karen who welcomed him as welcome Reverend Eugenius. <laughs> Reverend Sonia, Reverend Sonia, Reverend Sonia and Tamu are both on and Tamu is in some faraway place that could be Dubai or somewhere like that. No, uh, Tamu is in Trinidad and Tobago. In Trinidad, okay. sorry. Well, she used to, She's she studying was... to be a practitioner, so I know. <laughs> <laughs> And um, they just made the point about the connection. Once you go back to center, mm -hmm. the, the, the thought of the loved, the loved one, right, becomes the prayer and they actually pick up on it. And they are both um, in two different places and making the same comments. So the point about connectivity, once you spend that time within is being borne out by two of our practitioners. Wow. That's in their DNA and their genes. God is in their DNA. They're it's mother and daughter. <laughs> awesome. Oh. Awesome. Hi Tamu. Hi Reverend Sonia. Yes, welcome. 
Any last week, Vance or, or Stevie? I think everyone is just in, a, in general agreement. Um, there are a few questions, but um, some persons are saying their questions have been answered um, with, with the dialogue that is happening. Mm -hmm. that's, that's wonderful. Okay. Awesome. So um, what, what would you say would be your, if, if you were to wrap this um, part of our discussion up, um, what, would, what, what is one thing you'd want us to take away from this, Reverend Eugene? Oh man, there are so many things that are going through, but there's one recurring thing that wants to be said. Mm, thank you, Spirit. Mm. Know that you are greater than you may have ever thought before. Know that, that you are powerful in ways that may seem beyond imagination. Oh. Know that you are the love of life itself. And then share that. Do not be afraid to share that. Mm. I love that affirmation. I am the love of life itself. Yeah. That is liberty. Yeah. Yes, it is. That is liberty. And, and, and you know, that is a very powerful affirmation to have. Many of us, let me, well, speaking for myself, um, I grew up in an environment where you don't, you don't, as we say in Jamaica, you don't big up yourself. Mm. You don't look at an adult in, in, you know, in their face. Um, and if you, if you're going to speak about yourself and your, your, talents or your accomplishments were described as the word we use is enough. You're full of yourself. And so that's a, a conditioning that many of us yeah. have had over our lifetime. And now we come into this teaching and we hear how extraordinary we are, how absolutely powerful we are, how what, what being made in the image and likeness of God really, really means. And that I am that. How am. magnificent is that? Yes. That's one of the lessons that we have to really get within ourselves. Yeah. And just to add on to that, Sandy, I want to let everyone else or remind everybody else, remember your crown point. Lift up your crown. Walk as if, live as if, stand as if you are royalty because you are. Oh, I love that. Stand as if you are royalty because you are. Because you I are. Love that. I'm created in the image of the divine itself. How royal is that? <laughs> wow, wow, that is beautiful. beautiful. So stand that's, tall. That's be enough. enough. Yeah, be enough. Yeah. Cool. That, that sounds like a good place for us to wrap up this, this conversation. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful. It's been absolutely extraordinary. And, and you know, folks, know that. We're about to wrap up and it's just so, so great that we that you joined us this evening um, at our first lifeline and we're going to let you know when we will do another. But certainly there's just so much that that Reverend Eugene gave us this evening. Um, just that that last little tidbit about stand as if you're royalty. Just imagine that that I'm one of I'm the royal daughter in God's household. And I'm going to stand tall and I'm going to hold myself up high. Yeah. And I'm going to know that before I, if, if I go within that, I'll never, ever go without. Mm -hmm. And when my friends and my, my, my church um, members come and they're worried, I'm just going to be there for them. Yeah. There's just so much that we can do. And in the, in, in the doing, we know that the doing is coming from the being. Oh, this was absolutely extraordinary. And so as we close, I'd like to um, invite you, if, if this experience touched and moved and inspired you and, and you feel so inclined to uh, make a contribution to the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, you can do so through our um, Bank of Nova Scotia account, um, New Kingston Branch, account number 20941. And I also understand that there is a link in the chat to contribute through our donate button on PayPal. 
So um, we don't have the experience in church anymore to pass the basket, but we certainly welcome your contributions. And so, hmm. Sandy? Yes, love. Could, could you please repeat your account number again? Yes. It's the Bank of Nova Scotia account number 20941. Okay. And it's at the New Kingston branch. Okay. Great. Thanks for that. Okay. So, Reverend Eugene, it would be my pleasure to have you do the closing treatment. Absolutely. Before, before you do that, let me just thank my, my techie team. Um, Theo Smith, Vance Gardner, oh, oh gosh, without Theo and Vance, um, I mean, they both helped, and Steve, they, you all helped to, to ensure that we had a smooth experience with our Zoom slash um, Facebook connection, that you all could be part of this wonderful experience. And we're going to be um, letting you know very, very soon who we're going to have on as our second guest. Um, for the, or rather for the second life lifeline. Uh, is there anything I've forgotten? I don't think so. But just to thank you all for joining us. And so thank we you all for joining us. Yes. Thank you. And, oh, you're most welcome, Steve, and everyone else. So, Reverend Eugene, would you please do our it closing treatment? Be my honor, my blessing, and my pleasure. So this is what I know. I know that there is a power, a presence in a life from which all things are created. And by its very nature, it permeates, it penetrates, it fills the interest spaces of the universe. Yes, I know that it is called by many names. Sometimes it is called God. Sometimes it is called Allah. Sometimes it is called Krishna. Sometimes it is known as Buddha. Sometimes it is known as Olomodari. Sometimes it is called Vudun. Yeah. Here's the thing. There is no name to this infinite intelligence. For as the Tao Te Ching says in the first chapter, the Tao that can be named is not the nameless Tao. But we call it into our conscious awareness, calling it whatever works for us, whatever resonates with us, recognizing that it is the very source of all of life. Again, its very nature, by its very nature, it permeates, it penetrates, and it fills the interspaces of the universe, meaning that there is no space that where that which I call God is not. I recognize that it is at the very center of all of life, and having no circumference whatsoever, there isn't anything that can, does, or will exist outside of the infinite presence of love, the infinite presence of life, the infinite presence of God. And so recognizing and acknowledging that God is everywhere present at all times, I know that at all times God is present right where I am. For as I like to say, right here, right now, God is, we are. How so very grateful I am to, to be in the awareness that this infinite intelligence shows up so in so many different beautiful ways as you, as me, as we. And so it is from my awareness of our oneness and love and our awareness my awareness and the oneness of God that we are, that I speak this word, knowing that as we continue to mm, surrender to that power that beats our heart, as we continue to surrender to that presence that breathes our breath, that we are guided and directed to experience only in the highest and best, no matter what the appearances may look like, no matter what seems to be happening, we stay home with self that we allow this self to guide us to experience only the highest and the best that life has to offer. And it is our, mm, it is incumbent upon us to say yes, opening up our heart, our soul and our minds to say yes to being that ever loving presence of the divine, being the presence for those who may appear like they're going with less than being that presence that, that shows up as joy, that shows up as love, that shows up as a compassionate, hey, how are you today? Why? Because we know that we are connected with that same intelligence that is the love of all of life. So for this, 
and for so much more than my eyes can see, than my ears can hear, and than these words can ever possibly convey. I truly remain forever grateful, and I am so very thankful. It is from this space of gratitude and thanksgiving that I now release my word into the beautiful, powerful, and dynamic activity of love and of law. You see, I know that as this word is released into the law, the law has no other recourse but to lovingly return these words unto us, not void, not empty, but absolutely, completely, and abundantly fulfilled. And so fulfilled, we allow it to be. As I declare that it is so, so it is. And so it is. Oh, man. Wonderful. Thank you so much. It was our absolute pleasure. And so until our next time, we send you off with love and light okay. and we say good evening to all persons listening. Love you and bless you and see you next time. Walk good. Thank you for that reminder. <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah.